Thank you for watching Ravens Roundup, but we're 100% real, no matter if it's the popular opinion or not. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Click the like button and share it on your socials. Thank you and enjoy. All right. What, who or what position are you looking forward to seeing at this weekend's NFL Combine? If you don't know, the NFL Combine technically started today, but the TV stuff don't start until, if I'm not mistaken, Thursday or Friday. But technically, it started today with them checking in and getting all the whoop the whoop yada yada stuff going on. So, um, what position or who, certain individuals that you're looking for seeing at the combine? And and this is for everybody. This is this is just not you know like for the Ravens. This is like individually and for the Ravens and or Panthers too. Yeah, like everything but quarterback, honestly, because Carolina need everything but quarterback. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if, if we don't talk about specific players, uh, and I'm not even 100 percent sure if, if you know who who all is going and who's not, but uh, you know, Lad McConkey, which I cannot believe they talk about drafting a dude named Lad McConkey, <laughs> and, I'm, and, I, and I'm and I'm looking forward to it. But him, you know, Troy Franklin, uh, a couple of other receivers that are that are right around that you know early second, late first kind of area, uh, because they got to get Bryce someone or something. What, what picks? Because you don't have a first, right? No, I, I, I ain't trying to be funny. <laughs> what? What? So oh, what no, we, we do not have the number one overall pick, coach. We we do not. Uh, we have. Oh, I'm saying. No, I'm, so you don't have a first at all. No. What? So you you got the it first in shocking, the second. I know. Shocking. I know. You got the first. Uh, yeah. The first, first one in the pick second. in the second round. Okay. And then they're picking again sometime in the third. So, I mean, they they probably have to trade back. Honestly. How many? How many do you have? They have. I want to say they have six picks because I believe they have – they're missing like a fourth or a fifth, and I think they have like two sevenths. Okay. Something like that. They got to they 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 need to trade back and get some of them. Because yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's like – if I'm reading the, reading the room right, there's too many missing pieces that only have six picks. I think I think that first pick <laughs> in the second round is a great uh, uh, a great pick to trade back and get, and get some extra picks with because that's going to be mm-hmm. a, a highly coveted pick. Mm-hmm. Somebody trying to jump up there and get Bo Nix and ruin their future. <laughs> <laughs> and that was last year. That pick was um, Porter Jr. Yes. Last year, that pick was Porter Jr. That's what I'm uh, saying. Like, there's a lot of talent that falls that falls towards the end of the draft. And there'll be a mm-hmm. lot of guys right there. Probably going to gonna be no. somebody that's in that room that don't get picked. Yeah. Yeah. On Thursday night. Mm-hmm. I, I'm personally, I like for me personally, I'm, I like all to watch all the skill guys. I uh, just, you know, coaching skill guys. I just want to see them run. Want to see the drills. Want to see how fluent they they are. Want to see how fluent they move and whatnot. But yeah. as, as far as for the Ravens, O line, running back, and receiver. Um, and I and and I ain't even looking at the the top notch receivers. I'm looking for like like you said, somebody, uh, um, like Mac, Mac, uh, Jalen McMillan. Like a lot of people, like who? That's the receiver for for um. Washington that barely played, and people think people don't know much about him because they know oh dudes ain't poke, but they what they don't realize is poke is the third best receiver on that team. McMillan was number two, he just happened to be he was hurt. Yeah, and people when I said to somebody I'm like they don't even know who McMillan is. I'm like, well, you got to go back to the year before that when McMillan was you. McMillan was the guy before o, o dudes ain't was. Mm. I'm looking at guys like that, and you know Franklin probably be gone before them. But the the wide receiver cra- class is so loaded that you can get a a decent to good wide receiver in the second, maybe early third. So I'm looking at them them guys that ain't the big name receivers that you know we because because I think we need to look at the O line and we can kind of wait on a receiver. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, see the O line. Um... You get a chance to see how those guys move, how flexible they are. Um, just because a lot of times in certain schemes, like that kind of gets hidden and and you 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 don't really get to see them in space that much. So being able to watch them move and and just see the the kind of ankle flexion they have, the their recoverability when they're moving one way and then have to change and you know move all of their weight to the other side, like 
I like seeing that kind of stuff just to see how they move and and see how they can possibly project as far as being flexible. Like, oh, maybe this guy might be able to move over to the left side if he was just playing right tackle. Like, for example, like a a Marvin Mims or Mm -hmm. a J.C. Latham, you know, guys who grew up playing left tackle. And then in order, you know, for several different reasons, um, one of them being O-line continuity is they stayed on the right side. They started off on the right side and the team just said, you know what, we know you're a left tackle. We're going to keep you on the right side. But in these kind of situations, you can see those movement skills and see, hey, hey, this dude does have the feet and quickness to maybe move over to that side and and be back at his more natural position that he grew up playing. So mm-hmm. I, that's what I, I'm looking forward to. Yes, it's a lot of guys that and, and doing a little research with the O line that you know normally you look when you look at college O linemen, you just looking at left tackles because you know they're gonna move to to right. But now you're looking at right tackles because they just leaving them there, letting them play that position, and they're just yeah. gonna naturally play that position when they transition. And it's been a it's been a pleasure to see them do that for some guys because now you can get a true picture of what they're gonna look like next year well not a true pitch because they're gonna play this different competition but you get a chance to kind of see how they work on that side and now you ain't got to project them moving like chris said to the other side because they already there and you get a picture of to see their kick step and how they hand placement gonna work and just you get to see their body we don't have these being cleveland issues because you know we don't know what he looks like at left guard because right. we see him at right guard all the time so it just yeah. it's good to see him on the right side you know over there and then and I think I say Ben Cleveland but we think about Farlele. Farlele never played left tackle until he got to the Ravens and it was in a game. Yeah. He played right all through our high school, all through our college and got to the NFL and played freaking left tackle. Which is crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. What about you Mike? If, if you even get a chance to check it out. Yeah, I'm um man, I outside of the wide receivers cuz I'm intrigued um by that group especially the top the top three to five guys like it appears that there could be some some movement there i mean i feel like you know little little marvin you know he can he, he's probably gonna be the guy but it seems like neighbors and in uh and the cat from washington man can can uh gain some some ground in in this 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 week or whatever because yeah. uh, marvin ain't, marvin said he ain't doing nothing but the interview yeah yeah, so you know, you never know. We've seen crazier things happen before, so mm-hmm. you never know. But I'm intrigued by that. But outside of that, man, I always love the combine to see the big guys, and then that one freak athlete mm-hmm. that's you know mm-hmm. six four, three fifty that runs a four five forty, and you like, God, who the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I'm always intrigued to watch and see that. See, uh, obviously, you know, the 40 time, everybody want to check that, but it's always one guy that is just freakishly athletic and, and moves himself up the board, whether they deserve it or not. But they, they, with that size and moving like that, man, they, they make themselves a little bit more money. And then you never hear from them again. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> there, there love- is one guy I'm disappointed that's not running. Chris's guy. The oh, Cooper leg. DeJean? Cooper DeJean. He broke his leg. I didn't. He did? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. That's, that's why he didn't finish the season. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this. I, I, want, I want that pretty, guy to run. It's pretty I disappointing to not be running himself, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, I didn't know. I didn't know he broke his leg. I, I, so I take that back. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he just, oh, um, I think they said like a, a couple of weeks ago, he just got cleared. To mm. do some light jogging and stuff? Yeah. But so they, he probably they, he probably won't even be able to do nothing pro day either. You know? They say they they're gonna try to do a pro day in April, but who knows how that'll go? Yeah, that ain't that ain't good. But um, so th- and this I didn't send you guys this, but I think because it happened after I sent the stuff. Keep in mind, I sent these questions to these guys to like five thirty this morning. So, but this happened afterwards. Marvin and I just mentioned it to Mike. Marvin is not doing anything at the combine, but the uh, interview process. Do you think that helps or? Or hurts him. I, it's just I, fine. Like, yeah, he, he's gonna be pick three, four. You know, <laughs> either yeah. way. Like, I, I don't think running is gonna do anything. And teams have these guys' GPS times. Like, they know how fast he is compared mm-hmm. to Malik Neighbors, compared to Roma Dunze. Like, they know how fast he is on the field. So, 
is like, yeah, like, you know, everybody wants to see Marvin Harrison Jr. at the combine. So it's like a lot of those older dudes, they're like, oh, you know, like this is, you know, ruining the combine and all of that other shit. But they're not the ones that got to be up at 5 a.m., you know, answering these questions and then working out and having to stay loose and having to do all of this shit on the field. So I'm like I said it earlier, like I'm all for not having to do shit that annoys you. Right. And <laughs> that whole process seems like it's annoying. So Marvin Harrison Jr., do your thing. Nothing wrong with it. Cause I, I think personally, like he's been hearing it for two years. You're yeah. the best receiver out here. So yeah, why why let what happened to Voorhees or what happened to uh Ojabo or, or anybody else that then got hurt at mm-hmm. the I mean, because you ain't you you yeah. can't be drafted any higher. You're gonna be right. the, probably the first none, probably the first none. QB taken, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely, almost definitely, almost certain the first wide receiver taken. What do you have to gain by going through the underwear Olympics? Like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's, that stuff is is for everybody else. Like, he's already earned that position by the 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 tape that he sh- he's put out there. Right, mm-hmm. he's already earned it on the field. Um, everybody knows what he is. He's He's probably one of the most scouted players out there. Like everybody knows everything about him. So he doesn't need to do anything else. And we don't have to do anything. Like the whole point of the combine is to help improve improve your draft stock. Mm-hmm. To give the scouts and coaches something uh to consider before they make their pick. There's nothing that, that any of these teams need to consider that are gonna be within range to draft uh Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, that you know, th- there's nothing that they need. So he doesn't need to do anything. Great, great, great. Yeah, I, I think only I think the only thing that can happen with somebody like him is that he hurts his stock, right? You know, he runs a bad forty time now. Everybody's talking, you know, oh, he's a step slower than we thought. Um, but one thing I don't like, and it's not just on the player. I think you know the combine NFL, the combine officials, they know this, right? They know Caleb Williams. They know. Uh, Marvin Marvin Harrison. They know, you know, other guys out there who are surefire top five to ten talent. No matter what happens, they're gonna go right. So why not, you know, have these guys come to town for the interview side of it, but not allow them to take up a slot from another player mm. who, who could who could have been there um, and got the invitation to help themselves out. Uh, the one name that comes to mind, and it's not a huge name, but just because it's local, but uh, Baby Tua, you know, his he, oh, uh, Talia, Talia, yeah. like he, he didn't get the invite. And I mean, he had a good um senior bowl, he had a solid year. Um, he probably could have got invited there, but if if it's a numbers game, you know, Caleb and those guys that that's two to three spots at least. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, man, we out and come in and interview, but man, we'll we'll still use those slots to invite other players here. Yeah, cause, cause <laughs> yeah. she <was> crazy. <laughs> cause uh Caleb's not throwing, nor and I I found this out right before we came on, Jaden Daniels not throwing either. The quarterback mm-hmm. male is you. So mm-hmm. that's that's a guy, that's the spot where I don't know if Jaden's not running, but I know he's not throwing. But that's like you just said, a spot where Tua not Tua. Hey, what's what's the little brother's name? Talia. 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 Talia could have gotten in there and, and at least, you know, attempted to. I think the combines for guys, and you might have been alluded to this too, Mike, where guys that need to like they got question marks. Yeah. I need to show, I need to show my worth or what I can do. I need to compete. Yeah. That's that's the combines for those guys. And the guys that that's kind of set in stone, you know, step back and let them guys compete. You know, yeah. if you if you uh, Marvin Harrison, if you Caleb, if you some of these big name guys, you know, you know, step back, go through the interview process. Like you said, have it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the interviews and then let them get other guys that need this platform. Let them have it. Mm-hmm. But they, they need to figure it out, because if it's going to end up being opt out like these bowl games, if they keep on. Yeah. Yeah. If, before you, before you move on, Coach. Go ahead. Oh, B, did you go yet? Nah, I mean, like, the only thing that can happen for like a Marvin Harrison is like a team 
is dumb enough to talk themselves into a different receiver. So <laughs> <Right. laughs> he's he gonna be Marvin wherever he goes. So so yeah. for you, coach hey Chris, uh-huh. you know our draft combine gurus. What's the what's your thoughts on Drake May? I watched I watched a lot of Drake May. This it, I didn't watch a lot of football. I watched, I watched a lot of Drake May because I had a kid that played with Carolina, so I watched a lot of Drake May. Um, Drake is reason Drake is up there because Drake is is really really sneaky, and sneaky is the the, the word I'm gonna use because you don't think he can move, but he can. He has a he has a um a really good arm, but he's he's inconsistent. And he's but he's really, really smart. And and you when you put all that together, if you get him with the right system, Drake's gonna be really darn good. Or he's gonna be really darn bad. I don't think mm-hmm. it's gonna be a middle ground for Drake. Okay. And, but I think it's gonna be a messed up thing he is. He's going to end up and go and follow the same dude he followed at North Carolina. Drew Trubisky? No. How? How, yeah. Oh, see, I forgot about how. <laughs> yeah. He's going to follow Sam Howe to Washington, and he may end up, you know, in the same situation. Because Drake this year wasn't as good as Drake was last year. Mm-hmm. I feel like Drake last year had a better year film-wise and game-wise than he did this year. But the kid is, in my opinion, and I ain't I ain't studied him like like sitting down looking at all twenty two. I studied it from watching, watching trying wanting him to throw the ball to my kid, which he didn't. But the kid ended up transferring this <laughs> year. <laughs> um, but seeing him play that way, I think Drake's pretty good. Now, I obviously I like somebody else more than Drake, but Drake's pretty good. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I like him. Um... I think like the the stuff about him like being terrible and all of that, I think that's overblown and I think a lot of it is lazy. Mm-hmm. Um where you just say, Oh yeah, this dude is Sam Howe, this dude is uh Mitch Trubisky. Um, you know, like when you when you look at his feet, like I think he has better feet in the pocket than both of those dudes. Mm-hmm. Like his feet are are really, really nice in the pocket, like nice quiet feet, not really like jittery or anything like that. And and I like that calmness in a quarterback. But then again, you have that that thing where a lot of the great quarterbacks have is trying to be the hero. Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of that gunslinger, you know, mentality. And, you know, his I know Tez Walk gets a lot of pub and stuff like that, but his wide receivers didn't do him any favors. Right. Like they did there were some games where they were just downright dreadful. And, and Tez uh, ain't played till what the second half of the season. Yeah, because NCAA was, you know, messing him up. <laughs> and um, but then like like Coach said, Coach made a great point. Like, let's say if he's going to like if he's going to uh uh let's just say a, a situation like CJ Stroud went to, where you have a, a coaching staff in place. Well, not a coaching staff in place, but a coaching staff that has a plan. Mm-hmm. And I think when you you see the Miko Ryan's, he was like, "All right, I know my guy that I'm bringing with me from San San France from that uh, tree," and like Coach said, he's following Sam Howe to Washington. Cliff Kingsbury, I don't have faith in that. Right, right. Like right. so, it's like he he's most likely going to be put in a situation to fail. Mm-hmm. With with this kind of coaching staff around him, because I mean Cliff Kingsbury, he's and he doesn't, you know, like that. That's just not a. Uh, uh, and I have no confidence in him being able to create an offense that will help a rookie quarterback. Like I just don't. So th- so think about this, Mike. Do do we think Drake May can do what Kyler did? And think about Kyler made a lot, a lot, a lot of throws outside of the pocket. With D Hop, I don't know if Drake can, you know. And he, I mean, he, I think I think I think if Drake goes to 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 DC, he has a better supporting cast than Kyler. I think because you think about Scary Terry, you got um, 
What's your what's Jahan your back? Dotson, you got Dotson. Dotson. You got you got decent backs with um the guy that can play the slot two out the backfield. Gibson and Robinson. Gibson and Robinson. So you got some guys there and and how what how do for 18 million yards like this year? So <laughs> I mean, maybe, you know, cuz like I said, I, I think Drake's pretty good. But, you know, it's mm, well I just like like Chris, I don't trust the the, the coach. The offense coordinator. He he got to show me because he had Kyler, who was I think is an amazing football talent, and they kind of pierced down his lead. Yeah, and any any guy that makes that decision to because he was in Thailand with his girlfriend for a long time. Any man who makes the decision to be like, all right, I don't want to be in Thailand with this beautiful woman anymore. Let me go coach the Washington Commanders. You can't <laughs> trust somebody who makes decisions like that. <laughs> wait, wait. He was even there shorter because he was at USC last year, remember? USC, I could understand a little bit because USC <laughs> got a little, you know, a little something, something going on there, but it, not the commanders. Come on. <laughs> I would have, I would have rather stayed in Vegas. Anywhere but the commanders. Yeah. You know, you, I don't know if y'all saw, uh, they, they interviewed Antonio. He was like, yeah, I thought we had Cliff, but, uh, I guess Magic Johnson got a better offer than we did. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a blessing. Consider it a blessing. <laughs> right. So it is what it is. But that's my answer to your question, Mike. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> no problem. That was, that was a great question. Let's move on to 